G'day everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Pierre, this is Simple Homebrew, and I'm doing an all grain today. Now, I did say I was going to do live streaming of my all grains, but at the moment I'm not set up for it, so I can't really do it straight up. But, I am going to talk to you about it. Basically, it's a, a dolly, which is a, um, a NE IPA, and it's from Mountain Culture Brewing Company. So what I've done is I sent the recipe to my local grain store, um, my brew store, and got them to just measure it all up and put it in the bag for me. I ground it down using my grain mill at a one mil gap and it worked out okay. So what I've got is the recipe, basically I'll post the recipe down below so you guys can have a look at it. It's uh, pale malt, oats, uh, Vienna malt, sour malt, uh, I think chit malt wasn't available so I had to substitute that for what was it what did I substitute it for a barley malt I think apparently that's what you use and uh, we're putting a ton of hops in it which is what this is all about at the moment I am mashing in so the mash goes for about an hour and hopefully we'll get some sugars out of that and make a nice brew out of it hopefully it's got a bit of color to it because it was a pretty light color when I started so we'll see how that goes Anyway, I hope you enjoy it. Um, I'm going to add a few videos in to show you what I've done, a bit of B-roll, you would say, and uh, go from there. So what I've done is I've added salts to my brew. I put it in sparge water and my grain father before I added the grains. So basically what we do is measure the salts out to suit our area and our salt levels. Our water needs to have additions to change it so that we can mash in and mash it in and get the right sugars out and the salts help draw that sugar out so it makes it more acidic. Um, I didn't do a pH test because I'm an idiot but I'm sure it's going to be okay. Oh, I need a smaller bucket. I've got a problem. Um, this is going to get a, be a stuck mash, but it still should mash. I'm hoping that the um, the sparge will help. Uh, I'm going to let the fluid flow through the centre pipe as well as soak through, because I figure it's still going to soak through. And if I do a little bit of flow through the centre, it's going to have a bit of circulation going on. So hopefully that will help it mash. Um, so it's looking like it's doing something anyway, and it, obviously these um, oats are really coming through. But uh, I'm going to let that sit now for an hour and 15 minutes and go from there. So as you can imagine, I've got a stuck mash. I had to go and pull out the grains, bring it all up. Of course, I lost my little spacer to stop the grains going down the drain. But um, I loosened it all up. Hopefully now it'll flow a bit better uh, and filter out some of it. Look, it doesn't matter. When I pull the grains out, I'll loosen it up anyway and I'll wash what's there out with my sparge water. That's a, that's a point of having sparge water. Now, my sparge water did get um, salts as well to treat the water to make it right. Now, I did not use Camden this time. I've got a filtering system and I'm relying on that to get rid of most of my chlorine. So hopefully this beer will still taste good without putting extra chemicals in. All right, we'll keep going. I'm really wrapped. The actual tap for the sparge is actually aligned with this. It's going to work out really well. I'll put the, um, the basket thing back on after this finishes draining a bit and then we'll get stuck into it. I'm ready for sparging and I found that my tap lives right under the actual sparge pipe, or the, sorry, the mop pipe. And I should be just able to turn the tap on, run it, run it trickle, trickle the water through and let it run down it's going to take a lot less time for me normally i get a bucket scoop it out pour it in scoop it out pour it in now i don't have to so i'm really wrapped so i'll get that done
So I've been brewing this for a little while now, and I'll tell you what, it's a stuck mash. And I had to let it drip for at least 45 minutes to actually drain all the water out if I could, as I could. So it's been a bit of fun. Oh, a magpie up there. Hang on, I'll show you. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Well, well, hang on. What? And there he is. He's watching what I'm doing. Let me know how good it's going. I hope he is anyway. <laughs> Well, there we go. Look at that. Hey, big fella. What you doing, mate? You want to look after the place? Yeah, you don't really want to, do you? I'm a bit disappointed. The uh, the salts that I had in there uh, basically settled at the bottom and I didn't mix it in. Silly me presumed that it would just dissolve in the water, but it didn't. It just settled to the bottom and stayed there. So I have to mix it up now, or I had to mix it up, which... I didn't realise until I actually started sparging and it came out like a, a whitish sort of um, fluid. And I went, what's that? And I looked in and went, oh my god, the salts weren't mixed through properly. Hopefully the brew comes out good. If it comes out good, it's not a big deal. It would have been great if it did. Um, what are we going to do? Anyway, we'll get to the next part as soon as it finishes draining. Cheers. <music> lighten the subject uh, basically the idea is um, it's a boiling point it's at 100 degrees Celsius 214 degrees Fahrenheit um, basically I need to boil this now for 30 minutes and after 30 minutes I have to add two different hops for bittering and some aromas and stuff sorry I've got to keep an eye on it it's boiling away. So we've got Centennial and Mosaic. They're 34 grams each, and we're going to set them in there at 30 minutes to end a boil. And they will add all these little flavours. So when I do it, I will film it. Sorry, I'm going to keep my eye on it because it can boil over. Looking pretty good though. It's ready to go. Um, my, my system should start beeping at me in a minute saying that the boil has been reached and we will get stuck into it. All right, let's do this. Okay, the boil has started. I manually did it. Um, sometimes it takes you know, a minute before it decides it's gonna start boiling. But we are at boiling point, so I'm gonna let that boil happen. After 30 minutes, I'm gonna add some hops like I said and after an hour hopefully we'll have a boil out and we'll be nearly at the end of the boil so let's do this sorry guys I need to change that 75 minutes is the boil time uh, we need to get down to 22 litres so when it reaches 22 litres, it's probably about 5 litres away, so that it'll boil off about 5 litres. Once it's to that point, I'll do a gravity check after I cool it down to 20 degrees Celsius. And, sorry, still keep an eye on it. Um, yeah, once it reaches that point, uh, we'll be able to transfer it into the fermenter. Cheers. Okay, I made a mistake before. Uh, I need to do a hop stand uh, with those Centennial and Mosaic. Uh, 35, 34 grams of each. They're going into a hop sock, which, where is it? With this bloke here. Once the boil is over, I'll throw these in and leave them for half an hour before I start cooling everything off. So what I'll do now is get this ready. It's, it's probably about 10 minutes away from uh, boil, finish boil, finish a boil. So I'm going to throw these in. I've tied a knot in the bottom. I'm going to throw this in the top. So both packets. Oh, geez. Uh, oh, that's a problem. <laughs> Half of it, just because it was powdery, ended up on the seat I've been sitting on, waiting for all this to finish. 
that's it there. <laughs> Whoops. You can't see it. Um, I uh, It was a bit powdery. It didn't want to uh, basically stay in the actual hop sock. I'm going to throw this in as soon as the boiling has finished, which is, like, like I said, 10 minutes away. And uh, once I do that, you'll see me throw it in and we'll leave it for half an hour. Now, of course, it's nearly uh, 26 seconds out of uh, finish of boil. We're about 23 litres left. Now, I have the hop. I dropped on the floor here. They're going to get dropped in now uh, as soon as it stops. And uh, I am also sanitising my um, chiller. So it's about to beep. Done. Hop stand. Okay, so hop stand. I now need to take this back out. I need to stop the pump just for a sec. And remove the lid. It's a bit hot. Give it a few seconds. Let the uh, let the fluids drain. <laughs> what a deal! Everything's always hot. Right. Need to lift the lid, and I need to throw. Oh my god! We need to throw this in, just like that. Now, of course, it's 100 degrees Celsius, so it's going to kill any bacteria. And I'll pop that back on, and we'll run this for about 15 minutes. Keep this thing sanitized. This will get this thing sanitized, as well as uh, do the hop stand for half an hour. So I'm going to do that now, and come back to it. Just like that. So basically what's going to happen is the uh, system will, will run for 30 minutes and kill all bacteria in the lines, as well as uh, create a bit of a, some bitterness, but mostly aroma and some flavors as well from the hops. So we've got less than three minutes to go. I'm going to start cooling this using the, uh, what do you call it, the recirculating cooler system. And I'm going to transfer all this into a chubby, which I got from Keg King. Thank you guys. Um, basically, they gave it to me for nothing, which is a great bunch of blokes. This has been probably one of my go-to fermenters, and they've been really good. So I've got, it's full of sanitizer. I'm actually going to tip all this out now. <laughs> Lovely sink. I've got a sink, I don't have to worry so much. And I'm going to set that up so I can actually transfer the wort or wort into the cool uh, to the fermenter so I can actually add my yeast and start the fermentation. It is pressure fermenting. Um, so, oh, that didn't work. So it's a long day. I had to stop and cook dinner for the family. Um, so I had to try and do this while I'm cooking dinner. Let's throw that on there. You guys can't see what I'm doing, sorry. Just finished eating. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is just basically, it's about to beep, 39 seconds ago. I will now start the pump to start the water flow to start cooling my wort, wort off. Um, it should drop dramatically from 87 degrees at the moment to about 25 degrees within minutes because the water is very cold here. Uh, we are at the starting of winter and it's freezing at the moment. So I'll get the thermometer and I'll test the actual temperature. I'll be back. So we're going to transfer the wort. Now just before I said that the wort is, um, I'm watching this is going flat on me. Um, the wort is a word called wort. People pronounce it as wort, not wart, uh, because it's spelled W-O-R-T and people say wort, so I'm gonna keep it at wort. I'm pitching the, uh, sorry, I'm transferring it now. The temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. I'm gonna pitch the yeast. As soon as I pinch the yeast, pinch, pitch the yeast, I'll get back to you. Okay, so I have about two packets of uh, yeast to put in. So I'm doing verdant. So I'm gonna do two packs because the actual measurement became, was 1067 uh, according to the tilt. Uh, I don't know if it's full enough. I think it's about 20, Maybe about 20 litres maybe, a bit more. 
It's very cloudy, as you can see. Um, the filtering didn't really work awesomely, but that's fine. I can live with that. So I'm going to pop Verdant in. Um, two packets. It says to do one, but I'm going to do two uh, because it's very sweet. So we'll do that right now. Now I'll sanitize the packets and I'll just tear it. Basically, I used to cut scissors, I used to go for all that trouble. I've never, I found it's never been a problem in the past. Why worry now? Here we go. That's one. Grab a packet, spray it with sanitizer. You probably can't see what I'm doing there. That's, that's the next packet. Gonna do the same, just tear it open. This one doesn't have a tear spot, so I'm gonna need scissors for that one. I have sanitized these. And I'm gonna throw that packet in as well. Just like that, sorry, just like that. Done, there's two packets of yeast this time around. Normally don't do this many, but I'm gonna do it this time. So now I'm gonna sh seal the lid, shake the crap out of it, and uh, go from there. It is going to be pressure, pressure fermented, so I'm going to put a pressure regulator on it, uh, which is a spundy, which works quite well, by the way. You know, some people say it's not a very good product, but I can tell you now, I've used it for many brews, and it's done the job exactly how I wanted it to. So it's a 17.8 degrees Celsius, so it's a bit lower. That's because our groundwater is fairly cold at the moment. That's all shook up. I put in some um, uh, oxygen, basically oxygenized it, or nated it, whatever the word is. And now I'm going to sit that at 20 degrees for probably a week to 12 days. See how it's going and add the next lot of hops, which is a uh, dry hopping that I'm going to do. Until we meet again, I'm going to dry hop it next. Cheers. Okay, so I'm at day two. Um, I'm going to let the gas out so I can actually add hops in, more hops in, citra. 42 grams of citra, hopefully. And uh, we shall see how that works out. Now I'm going to have to work quickly as uh, this Krausen will come up very quickly if I'm not. Hang on, I'll just get the lid off. Okay, so the Krausen moved its way up very quickly and it's going to come to the top. I don't want it to come to the top, so I've got to get this lid back on before it. But I threw it in there, I know you can't see it. Now I've let oxygen in, so I've got to purge a bit of oxygen. You hear it coming out? It doesn't matter, it's still fermenting, so it'll ferment itself out anyway. Okay, so this is what happened. The Krausen rose from here all the way up to here because it hasn't finished fermenting yet. So now I'm going to let that repressurize and hopefully it'll bring the Krausen back down again. Wow, I'll we'll give it a bit of a, a, bit of a move around. <laughs> oh God, that's a worry. I don't think it's going to get any higher than that, but anyway, what are we going to do? Okay, I just thought I might tell you about the settling of the Krausen. Now the pressure's building back up, it's about 5 psi. I'll just undress this thing. <laughs> see the Krausen's already starting to dissipate, if you can see that. I don't know if you can tell. So it's gone down to about here now. It was up here. And it's come down just by pressurizing it again. So it's pretty safe to do this. Also, anybody who talks about these Bundys, I've heard people say that they're, they're rubbish. They're not rubbish. They are really good. Um, they're, they're, they're talking about the risk of muck getting into this valve here, or this uh, output, and blocking it, so it pressurizes. But you've still got the safety valve, which could get blocked as well, and you've got the serving side as well, which could get blocked as well. So if you, even if you put a air pipe down to the floor or t into a bucket, it could still get blocked. So regardless of what anybody thinks, these things actually work really well. And... Uh, 
I swear by them. I'm, I'm going to buy a few more. Don't know about the new ones, but this is the older time, and uh, it fits every little uh, quick connect. And uh, yeah. Anyway, we'll get back to you soon. Okay, it's day 12. I am about to put the hops into the <laughs> fermented product. It's pretty much finished, so I'm gonna just take this off. I'll get some light for the I'll get some light for the subject. Now this is a little beauty. <laughs> oh god, those lights bloody turn on and off. It's actually a Google light. Um I've got to wait for it to stop blinking so I can get it set up. Okay, hang on. Okay, so I've sorted the light out. Um I need to add where the hops? Okay, so I've sorted the light out. So all I need to do is now add these hops. It's about day 12. Galaxy, 84 grams of Galaxy. This is just for aromas and flavors and maybe make it a bit cloudy. So it's still fermenting a little bit. So I will release the gas and you'll see it foam up. Now I'm gonna open up just bear with me, I've got to open the lid. Not yet, no, no, it's too much pressure still. So I've left a bit of pressure in there, just so I can get the lid up and have that pop like that. Just so. Oh, God, i got to go. Got to go quick. Quick, see how that I had a blowout it foamed up before I got the bloody hops in it all went all over the place and now I have to clean this up hang on I'll be back still recording are <laughs> you still recording uh, well had a bit of a disaster I've just cleaned it up um, I've let the gas out now it's starting to settle a little bit so I'll get this lid back off now we'll see if we can pop that hops in again. All right, settled right down now. I had real trouble getting the lid back on because that little part, that little bit here, if you can see my finger, got caught here and I was, could not get the lid to go on. I was panicking so much. Oh my God. Well, you saw it first hand. These are the problems you can get. All right, in goes the rest of the 84 grams of hops. I should just wait it, should have been a bit more patient. That will sit there for another maybe 14 days or whatever. It's gonna sit there for a little while until it's finished fermenting anyway. You can see it wasn't completely finished. So this is like day 12, so it's been a bit of a time consuming fermentation. I'm gonna stir that up a bit. Um, look, because it hasn't finished fermenting, you still got uh, yeast destroying or eating the sugars and anything else that might be there. The yeast is still going to overpower everything else, all of the uh, any bacteria that might have gone in, anything else, uh, and of course, hops is very strong and it's antibacterial as well. So it should be good from here on in. Let it finish fermenting. Uh, let the, the gas will build back up again over time, uh, and it should extract all the rest of the oxygen that I might have entered or added to this. It, like I said, it hasn't finished fermenting yet, so we've got a little bit of time for it to get rid of any oxygen that might be left behind. All right, uh, that's it. Thank you guys, thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing. Thank you to my patrons for helping supply the funds to be able to make brews like this. Uh, even though this wasn't overly expensive, it was actually quite a, uh, an inexpensive beer to make it took 45 bucks it cost me and time and it was well worth it i know i had a bit of a blowout i think i've got a little bit less beer than i had before <laughs> what are you going to do but guys thank you very much we'll see you in the next video and i hope you like this one uh the next video is actually probably going to be the tasting video for this one all right cheers guys we'll see you soon
Oh, sit that down.